Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. So nuclear weapons is always something that we got to live with in this world. Understanding that it could just take one bad decision and it could lead to the complete destruction of our species. But the thing is, is most people only know about the two bombs that were used during World War II, being the ones that were dropped on Japan by the United States on the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. People don't really know about all the other nuclear bombs that have been tested. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys some information about nuclear bombs, nuclear technology, and the amount of nuclear tests that have ever been partaken. And let's just say you're probably going to be a little bit surprised. Or maybe not, I guess it just depends on what type of person you are. So first off, here are all the countries that actually own nuclear weapons at the moment. The United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, China, North Korea, India, Pakistan, and maybe Israel. Not gonna get into that argument, but I will say that it is up for debate. Countries that did actually have once nuclear weapons and or the methods in order to gain them and have decided to give them up are South Africa, and three nations that were in the former Soviet Union. Belarus, Kazakhstan, and the Ukraine. So good on you four. Now there are a few nations that have a nuclear sharing program, meaning that they have the weapons and they circulate them through the countries in order to intimidate other countries from attacking them. Basically, it's just a mean of defense, as they state. But what it is is exposed to be a deterrent and meant to turn off other countries from wanting to invade and attack them. The countries that participate in the nuclear sharing program are Belgium, Germany, Italy, Turkey, and the Netherlands. There used to be two other countries that partook into the nuclear sharing program, being Canada and Greece, but they decided to leave the program. So here's where it gets interesting. I'm gonna give you guys the number of tests that each country has partaken in when it comes to testing out nuclear weapons. And let's just say it's a lot more than two. So let's get started. Now, the United States of America has partaken in, hold your jaw, between 1,032 tests and 1,054 tests. The numbers differentiate depending on who you get your information from. My guess is it's probably the higher of the two. Now, the USSR had about 715 nuclear tests. Since its collapse, though, Russia has not partaken in any more nuclear tests. The United Kingdom has taken part in about 45 nuclear tests, 21 of which they did in Australia, which I'm pretty sure the Australians are happy about. France has actually had about 210 nuclear tests, a lot of which they shot off in Africa. China has tested about 45 nuclear weapons. India has tested about 4 or 5 nuclear weapons. Pakistan has tested about 3 or 6 nuclear weapons. And North Korea has about 1 or 2. It's kind of hard to judge success with their technology their technology. I don't think anybody really knows what the heck they're doing. And so far those are the only countries that have actually had any nuclear tests done. Most of the technology in the other countries that I listed didn't actually have nuclear testing in themselves, but were given the technology by other countries. So in case you were counting, that's about... I'm gonna just round this so that way people aren't just gonna fight with me about how perfect and correct this number is. But it's about 2,050 to 2,100 nuclear bombs that have been dropped. Is These are only the numbers that have been announced. So trying to get a positive reading on this is quite hard. But if you'd really like to just visually see the extent of how many nuclear bombs were released, there was a video that was made by Isao Shimoto. He took all the explosions from 1945 to 1998, giving a visual map showing the exact location of each explosion that has happened. It's quite interesting and links in the description. But the country with the most nuclear explosions to ever partake in its own borders is America. So that's a little weird. But America has done a lot of nuclear testing in the oceans and even the atmosphere. This is a picture of an actual explosion that happened within the atmosphere about 150 miles above the surface of Earth. But just looking at the power of what a nuclear bomb can do is just unbelievable.
I mean, just look at this footage of what it can do to a bus. Or even a car. Or even this forest. I mean, the amount of power is awe-inspiring. A tourist destination in Nevada, which is a seat on center, is a nuclear explosion site that is actually quite pretty, but as you can see, it's kind of scary too. I mean, that is one way to get rid of an anthill. So now what I'm gonna do is talk about a little bit about the myths and the misunderstandings about nuclear technology and give you guys a good understanding about what it is we should be focusing on when it comes to this stuff. So one thing a lot of people may be wondering is, well this is probably the cause of all the global warming. No, actually, if anything, ironically, nuclear weapons fight global warming. No, it's definitely not something I want to advise us doing to combat global warming. If you've ever heard of nuclear winter, there's a great article on the website NewScientist.com, and I have a link in the description that talks in great detail about what would happen if a plentiful amount of nuclear bombs were to explode. What it would actually do is release sediment within the atmosphere, completely blocking off the sun. So it's not like a, it, it's good for the environment in any way, shape, or form. Because it literally just blocks out the sun, killing all the plants, and affects weather patterns, plus the massive amount of radiation. No, uh, uh, no, that's not a good idea at all. Another myth that I've heard is if we were to release over a hundred nuclear bombs in one year, we would destroy the planet. And that's not true, because in 1962, and for context, that's right around the time the Cuban Missile Crisis was going on, so that was basically just the United States and the USSR puffing out each other's chest by dropping as many nuclear bombs as they could, managed to reach about 150 to 160 nuclear weapons exploding in that year alone. With all that said and done, I want to leave you guys with something kind of fun, I guess you could say. There's a website called gizmac.com, and what you can do on gizmac.com is take where you live, wherever it is on Earth, and actually project the amount of damage as an array of different types of nuclear bombs all the way up to an asteroid would do to the area in which you live. It's very interesting, I would advise you guys just to check it out. You can go all the way from the oldest nuclear bombs to the really new ones, which can do quite a bit of damage. As you can see though, I am just out of the range of this asteroid, even though I'd still be dead. I am happy about that at least. Nuclear technology has, if anything, prevented the Cold War from progressing into what could have been the most devastating war in the history of mankind. So if you want to do an argument for nuclear technology, that would be the only thing I could see as beneficial. But other than that, I am a person who, I, I just, I disagree with war so much. Because I just, I don't agree with the killing of people. Because if you think of what nuclear weapons have really been for, it's to kill everybody who really wasn't directly involved in the war. I mean, when the United States dropped nuclear weapons on Japan, you didn't see us drop them on Tokyo. But then again, who were the people that started that whole war that dragged every single one of those people into it? The people in Tokyo. And that's all nuclear technology would be used for, if it were used, is to kill everybody but the leaders. The leaders that started the war. So I advise you guys to look at all the links I described. I have my citations below. And with that said, thank you for watching. And remember, never stop learning. Thank you.